Welcome. In our in the last exercise, you were asked to create a series of Java doc comments in your source code uh, so that we can clarify the usage of that class. Uh, Java doc's important because it not only helps you to uh, identify the meaningful pieces of a class and their descriptions, uh, if you should forget or some time should, might go by before you use the class again, uh, but it helps anybody else that might be able to use your work in their application. And they can see how the class is intended to be used and what the members of that class are, etc. So it's a real helpful form of commenting. Um, I have now the employee class open uh, in my editor. Uh, let me, let's take a look at some of the, do, uh, the Java docs that it contains. Um, notice on lines two through four, all we're doing there is giving a short description as to what this class is for. And he's just simply telling us that, it's in, that it is intended to represent an employee. Uh, then, on line six through eight, he's describing a variable, and the variable immediately follows, and that would be the next ID. So, in this particular case, the uh, Java doc is fairly self-explanatory. Even the name of the uh, variable is a little bit of a giveaway, uh, but it doesn't hurt. What's important, though, is Line, uh, comments like the one from 10 to 13. Now, in that case, the ID variable is going to be automatically incremented. And so, what he's giving us is a bit more of a description there. Also, notice that he's using HTML style markup for uh, changing the font for the variable next ID. Um, that just makes the end result, the HTML document we'll be viewing shortly, uh, it makes that variable stand out and more clear that it is code. He does the same thing moving down this page for every one of his variables. Then he moves into working with the constructors. Each constructor has its own Java doc and it explains why the constructor is there. Each one of these constructors takes a different set of uh, parameters. They all essentially do the same thing, help us create an instance of the employee. But they, because they take different parameters, uh, Javadoc gives us a way to identify those parameters. And we use the uh, special character at in Javadoc to identify a parameter by following it with the keyword param. Notice then he's describing the parameter and then what it's for. He does that for each parameter that's in the constructor. And so it goes. He follows that pattern all the way through for all the constructors that are, that are in our employee class. For each method, he follows a similar practice. He describes what the method is about. And in this case, notice there's another keyword, at return. In that case, we can signal to Java docs that this is a return value for that method. He follows that process all the way through for all of the methods that are in the employee class. And I'm scrolling through it right now so that we can just get a sense that all the methods in here have in fact been uh, Java docked. On line 164 to line 167, the Java doc is a little bigger than the others, and that's because there's more going on here. Uh, in this case now, he's providing us with a full name, a composite of the first name and the last name. So he's simply giving us a description that that's exactly what this method is intended to do. The same is true for the one that follows, uh, where we have a description for our get pay info. 
it returns all the information essentially that we've stored in the class. The payroll class was also Java docked. In the payroll class, we can see that on the class level, from four down to six, he supplied a Java doc comment. The Java doc comment has an interesting keyword, at link. The at link keyword allows us to provide a link to the dependent classes that this particular class might use. In this case, the payroll class uses uh, the employee class. So he's creating a link to that employee class right there by using the link keyword. Now that we've looked at the Java doc markup, uh, let's uh, create the actual Java doc for it. I'll open up a console in my payroll 8 solutions directory, uh, and I'm going to run Java doc. I need to tell it where I'd like it to deliver the finished document, well, documents. What level of access would I like to report on? What's the package? And what is the source code? All right. We've given it all the information we need to, uh, to compile our HTML. And that's exactly what occurred. We have now our compiled HTML. And that's what all of this report actually indicates. Back in my editor, I need to refresh this so we can see the new Java doc. Uh, let's go to the right command, refresh, not rename. And I can see now that I have Java docs, or I have docs there, as we had mentioned. In the docs, you can see that I now have a lot of HTML that's been spawned. Uh, this HTML is used in part and in whole to create the pages for a formatted HTML document that clearly uh, will uh, document our classes. The easiest way to look at that is to go to the lead page, which is always the index.html. I'm going to open that page up in my browser, and I will move that browser over to this screen. And we can see that I now have the Java doc opening frame. I'm looking at a package, employees, well, I have a package available, I should say, of employees. If I were to click on that, I'm essentially looking at this, uh, this screen here. The employee class contains only one class in it, employee. I'll move to the employee class. In the employee class, I see that the uh, Java doc has set up a summary uh, for my fields, constructors, and methods. These are just short type descriptions for those items. By clicking on any one item, such as get ID, I'll go to a more complete description of that, uh, of that item. And here we can see that the returns are being labeled as uh, an ID. Uh, we can see that the ID is coming back. We also, from the signature, know that that's an int. Uh, I can click on all classes. Now notice the one that's in our default package now appears, namely payroll. When I go to payroll, what I'll see in there is the listing or the Java docking for that payroll class. Now the interesting part about it uh, is this link right there. We talked about that when we were looking at the Java doc in our source code. Uh, and if you remember, I had mentioned the at link. Well, that created the link from one class to another. If I click on that, I'm brought right back to the employee class. Now, sometimes the relationships between dependencies of classes can get complex. And that kind of linkage is really important in those cases. 
Now that completes our review of the Java Doc exercise. Now you need to go on and do your next reading, uh, and that'll be about your uh, the wrapper classes that Java uses to try to enhance the capabilities of the primitive data types that Java has uh, that Java has internally. Um, sometimes uh, a primitive doesn't work uh, if the requirement is a class. So then we need to alter that primitive so that it can be used in that uh, for that purpose. And that's what your next reading will be about. Enjoy the next reading.